Hey kids, I'm in there. Back from another excursion in uh, Guitar Center, crazy weird use section where I ran across the Yamaha 88HR. This is an 8 channel preamp that does AES EBU out. And it's kind of neat. Uh, it's 96K, and even way back in the day in 2004, you could connect like 200 of these up at one time and control them digitally if you're willing to pay $2,200 for the privilege. But in 2021, about 250, 300 bucks, even as low as 169, and you will typically see, you know, one of four available because they live their lives in symphony racks like New York Philharmonic, uh, LA Philharmonic, and places like that. But why are they so cheap? Well, let's take a look at what's on the back. I guess I should say, let's take a look at what's not on the back. Combo jacks, which isn't a big deal, but you do get eight XLR connectors and you get your standard uh, word clock in and out. And you have digital out, A, S, E, B, U, A, and B. That's right, no analog. If you want to get this into a computer, you're going to need something like the HDSP AES, which is going to set you back about 1200 bucks. A little outside of my price range, but I happen to have the 9632 from RME, and that's reasonably priced. You can pick these up used for about $200, and they have a digital breakout cable that supports AES, EBU, and spit-off. It's about 52 bucks. Now, I have to get the audio out of the Yamaha itself, and I could use a Hosa Digital Snake, which is AES, EBU. It's going to break it out to eight channels, but where's the fun in that? There's not even a challenge. I dug around in manuals, and I found the pinouts for the 9632 and the 88HR. And I started to formulate a plan. Started by heading over to Amazon and picking up a DB25 and DB9 connector wiring terminals. Uh, solderless. These are just using screws. And they're from Twinkle Bay. This is what I got. AES in, 1 to 4, 14 to 8. AES out, 8 to 5, 21 to 9. And of course, ground for reference. Skipping out the cables and just connecting it end to end. In theory... This should work. This is what I ended up with. It's pretty simple because we're only dealing with five cables, uh, well, five connections on each end. Plus minus, you know, for two channels in, plus minus on two channels out. And the ground, pretty easy to wire up. And DB25, it's more of the same. I was a little more worried about this one simply because uh, I had no idea how uh, you were going to be able to fit all that in, but they did it. It was silly easy to get this wired up, and it absolutely beats having to solder DB25 connector. Those are a nightmare, period. But this is what we ended up with, and the eagle eye among you might see that. Yeah, it's not an AES EBU cable. Hey, that's just a standard Cat5 cable, which you absolutely cannot use for AES EBU. I'm kidding. AES audio wants 110 ohm impedance, otherwise you can have clocking problems due to signal reflection. Now, CAT5, CAT6 is 100 ohms with a plus minus 15% margin. So the moral of the story is this. If your cable is like less than 20 meters, you can grab the gnarliest unshielded Ethernet cable that you can find and have at. And don't listen to anyone that brings tone into a digital cable fight. Because that's not how any of this works. Not even a little bit. Well, let's take a look at the size of this thing. Because it's massive at 480 millimeters by 383 millimeters. That's 18 by 15 freedom units. 5 kilos, that's 11 pounds. And it's a little thirsty at 35 watts. But come on, that startup sequence, that's worth 35 watts all by itself. So the 88HR is pretty much business in the front, business in the back. One thing that I was very happy to see is bankable phantom power. You have a master switch, you cut it on off. But outside of that, I only have channels 7 and 8 wired up because I only had two available on the 9632. But hey, I can switch back and forth. I can go between a condenser mic, ribbon mic, dynamic mic. And as you see, the gain maxes out at uh, 62 dB, completely silent. You can go all the way down to zero for line input and keep on going for a 10 dB pad. High pass filter, brilliant. I've never really used a high pass filter on a preamp itself. I've always preferred plugins, but I tried this just because I wanted to take a Pepsi challenge. It worked, it's great. 
I'm using it right now in place of a plugin, which first time for everything, right? But yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, and that knob, that aluminum knob feels just as good as it looks. Do you see that? That, this is the amazing thing about it. Right now, I have the Golden Age D2 plugged directly into the 88HR. No noise repellent. I'm not doing anything to get rid of the studio noise. It's not a loud environment, but it's enough to pick up a little bit of background noise with the fans. You know, I'm surrounded by five computers and monitors and RF interference and all that. But watch that. Yeah, that's at 53 dB of gain. That's where this thing, that's where it shines. Now I went ahead and threw on a uh, noise repellent. And I'll go ahead and put a gate back on. So this would be my normal stack minus EQ and compression, which... With any mic, especially like a uh, like an SM7B or something like that, please, for the love of flying spaghetti monster kids, EQ it because it sounds like this. It sounds like it's underwater out of the box. The only two things you should record it with an SM7B without any EQ are kick drums and guitar cabinets. If you're using it for vocal, go ahead and throw on, you know, just some basic EQ. And so concludes the tale of a boy. And his Yamaha 88HR. You genuinely have no idea how many times I flub saying Yamaha 88HR. But I guarantee you it's thoroughly stuck into my brain meats at this point. I'll be mumbling Yamaha 88HR in the home. Guaranteed. Okay. Well, project-wise, it was a fun project. I had a good time putting it together, sticking everything, and making it work. Not that there was much to it, but... First, the preamp itself, if you're looking to do this, if you have everything, maybe it's a good idea. If you don't, like I said, you could probably get, you know, $700 to $1,000 worth of additional equipment just to get one of these hooked up if you don't currently have it. But if I was going to stack it up against like my art preamps, my Apogee preamps, PreSonus, uh, Focusrite, uh, my Golden Age preamps, best thing I have in my little home studio. Very happy with it. Not that you can really tell on a YouTube video because you're dealing with 128K uh, 44.1 AAC audio that YouTube currently breaks everything down to today, like right now. They could change it tomorrow. So keep that in mind, especially if you're watching microphone comparison videos or preamp comparison videos. You're not really getting a clear picture. What I will do is uh, look down in the description and I'll just give you a 32-bit uncompressed WAV file that you can listen to. I don't know if it's going to sound too much different since I do have a you know, noise gate and real-time noise repellent and all that stuff running currently on the track. So I, I don't know what type of super clear picture that'll give you. In complete silence, again, these were typically used in orchestras and stuff like that. You know, symphonic calls, really good um, for recording that type of stuff. You know, if you're going to be miking up pianos, uh, maybe a harpsichord. I've never tried to, I don't believe I've ever miked up a harpsichord. That might be interesting. I'm going to be Googling that later. But, you know, brass wood, stuff like that. Or, again, just a mic preamp. It works. I have two channels available. And if anything happens to these two channels, I can just keep on running it down until I get to the end. But, yeah, that's a fun project. Uh, it's interesting. I always like it when I pick up a piece of equipment just to play around with out of curiosity. And, and it doesn't happen very often, but it's something that I'm going to continue using because it turns out that it's a really good piece of equipment, even in 2021. Um Cool. That's going to do it. You like what we do? Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, as always. That's where all this stuff happens. Um, come hop into our Discord if you get any questions for me or anything like that. And uh, we got a Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast, and a web zone, Linux Gamecast.com. That's where we do all the fun stuff. 
and all these beautiful people are hanging out, chatting, doing that thing live. Uh, that's going to do it. I'm out. Go do some fun stuff. Get out there. Make something awesome. Use Linux. Use whatever you need, really. But just do it. <laughs>